The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m., 60 minutes to go until the opening bell. And right now we have the futures market green across the board, slightly positive. S&P is up by about four points, trading at 31.40 right now. NASDAQ futures up 31, trading at 10,563. Got the Dow up 19 points, 25,789. Oil this morning up about 11 cents. Oil trading at 47.3. We got the 10-year yield 0.6. 5.8%. We get some mortgage demand this morning. We'll get into that in a moment for those low interest rates. As far as Europe, the DAX down about 6 tenths percent. FTSE down about 3 tenths percent. As far as Asia, Asia numbers, Nikkei down about 8 tenths percent. Shanghai actually positive 1.7%. HSI positive by about 6 tenths percent as well. Jumping over to the contracts for commodities, we'll start off with crude, 4072, climbing up near the highs of about $41 that we saw early on Monday. Gold contracts, been quite a week for gold, making new highs this morning at 1816.90. You're currently trading at 1814, the price of gold. Silver, up eight pennies. We were as high as 1889 in silver. Notes and bonds. We'll start it with the 10-year. There's your 10-year, 139.05. The 30-year, minus four ticks at 178.28. Jump into the indices. Your S&P is currently positive four points. We make a high late Monday. Volatility Tuesday, quite volatile. We got off the program at 11 a.m. and things seemed rosy. The markets were climbing to positive territory almost across the board. And then kaboom, 11.15 a.m. We trade from 3171 down to a low basically right at the close of 31.32. So you're talking about 40 points approximately in the S&Ps. And since the close, we've been jumping around at a lower range of between about 31.30, maybe 31.35, the upper end of about 31.45 to 31.50. And we're kind of right in the middle of that range. So kind of just hanging out right where we were in terms of the lows of yesterday morning and pretty close to the lows that we made at the close yesterday evening. In terms of the NASDAQ, NQs, pretty similar story, right? Above basically where we were pre-market, kind of around the close yesterday. The highs 10,694. We're about 130 points off that level in the NQs. The Dow 25,790. Highs after Monday 26,280. In terms of where we were yesterday when the slide began early in the day, the Dow was above 26,000. We're about 200 points below that level. In terms of what else we have going on in the market. I mentioned mortgage demand, quite a number. Mortgage demand spiking 33% as rates set another record low. Mortgage applications to purchase a home rose 5% for the week and were a remarkable 33% higher than a year ago. Home price gains continue to accelerate, so low mortgage rates are giving buyers much needed help. Uh, in terms of that number, the average contract interest rate for the 30-year fixed mortgage with conforming loan balances uh, dropped to 3.26% from 3.29 points, including origination fee for loans with a 20% down payment decreased to 0.35 from 0.36. So mortgage demand continuing to be strong. Uh, this story out, Brooks Brothers, the story to Peril Brand. They're going BK. Uh, I was half joking, and uh, you never see want to see a good business. I like Brooks Brothers. I got Brooks Brothers shirts. They got Good quality stuff. A little bit pricey. They get outlets down in Florida, though. Um, there might be some, there might be some good sales coming on some Brooks Brothers apparel. Uh, but I joked, it's hard to sell suits when everybody's working in their pajamas these days. Uh, but unfortunately, Brooks Brothers filing for bankruptcy generated more than almost almost a billion dollars in sales last year. Two hundred stores. They're going to be closing some. Fifty one of them. Um, a decision it tri attributes to the pandemic. So I mean, I I've. I've shopped many times at the Brooks Brothers, Brooks Brothers outlets in Florida, and I uh, definitely haven't been doing any of that since about Feb, March during the pandemic. That's for sure. Um, one of those big outlets, not where I'm going to be going to hang out on the weekend, but Brooks Brothers going BK. Walgreens, quite a story here. So they're striking a deal with primary care company to open doctor offices 
in hundreds of drugstores. So it's going to be Walgreens. And in the back corner, it's not just going to be the pharmacy. You're going to be visiting your village doctor, your village MD, your, uh, your primary person. Um, Walgreens and Village MD struck a deal to open doctors' offices in 500 to 700 drugstores over the next five years. Most of the primary care clinics will be about 3,300 square feet, about a quarter of the size of Walgreens' average store. So check that out, right? It's not just going to be this little back pharmacy area. You cut Walgreens in four, and they're going to dedicate 25% of their average store, or maybe they're going to build it out from there. Nonetheless, that's a big operation. They're basically building an entire primary care doctor's office, one-stop shop for everything. More than half will open in areas with a shortage of health professionals and a population that's underserved. That's great. It's good to hear for sure. Uh, to see how that's hitting, Walgreens Boots Alliance, WBA is their symbol. You got to like that pop, right? Up to about 43.50 from about 42.22 yesterday. You want to talk about pops. How about let's just talk about Walmart, man. Walmart coming out with Walmart Plus yesterday. Talk about an acceleration up from 118 to basically 128, almost $10. It was up yesterday, technically closed 126.95. We're up about a dollar from that level, even extending those gains. It's going to be $98. It's going to come with uh, a variety of benefits. Not really sure the exact of it. Some of it was, I think they're saying, uh, free same day delivery groceries, maybe a huge part of Walmart's revenues is groceries. Uh, they're almost turning into a grocery store. They do 40%, I think, of their business just in groceries, uh, along with maybe some cheap discounted gas. I know, um, you know, how does that play in with Sam's? So Sam's is, you know, the Costco um, competitor to, um, you know, Walmart. Um, you know, Sam, Sam, is, Sam is the Costco's, right? They, you can join them, yet Sam's is Walmart. And one of the big benefits is you can get gas there. Either way, the market loving that they're going to basically bring people into their ecosystem, $100 a year. We've seen what it's done for Amazon. Once you sign up for that, you do all your shopping there. A lot of people shop at Walmart, folks. Could be a big thing, and the market thinks so as well. We're still almost a dollar positive on Walmart. The interesting thing was I, I said, oh, man, what's going to happen to Amazon? And Amazon almost didn't even react to that news. Target didn't either. I'll, I'll pull them up in a moment. I mean, the market pulled back. Amazon pulled back. We're still sitting at 3,022, a remarkable number when you look at this run in Amazon. I mean, Tom was saying yesterday in his program, you could pull back to 2,700 in the stock, and you got nothing wrong at all. A natural pullback. You just went from 1626 to 3,069. Um, remarkable acceleration. Now, as I mentioned, Target. I was like, well, did Target maybe get hit yesterday in that Walmart news? Not really. Um, you know, you were down a bit yesterday with the market yesterday, but you're trading at 118.45 on Target. It'd be interesting to see if they try and uh, adopt a similar thing. Maybe they're not to the economy as a scale. Maybe they don't have quite a big enough reach to start charging people for that type of a service. But you know that they're going to be talking about it with the way Walmart reacted and the way it's done great things for Amazon. All right, let's check in on the VIX as we wrap up this first segment. 2907, a little bit of elevation on the VIX. We're currently trading at 3137 in the S&Ps. Big numbers, big numbers in the VIX, though, as volatility priced into this market. Checking out those S&Ps, 3137, just kind of bouncing around this area, right around the close. No real action. You know, a tight trading range overnight. I woke up this morning. I said, what's going to happen? Where are the futures? Ah, they're up like two. Okay. Everything's calm. Uh, I kid. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back for the break to see what else we have on tap for Wednesday trading. We got oil inventory numbers at 1030 this morning, as well as what other equities we have moving. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN. Com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Right now, we get the S&Ps trading at 31.36. We get the NQs positive by 19. The Dow negative by 19 as the market tries to find a bid or an offer. Wednesday trading, we get the EIA oil contract. We get the inventory numbers today, 10.30, about two hours from right now. Tom and I will be in the air for those. Oil approaching that 41 level for some context here. Uh, we've been bouncing up against this 40, 41. You could call it all the way from about June 8th, right? A month we've been hovering around that level. Made it back down to $35. Uh, maybe that accelerating, you, sh you, you could say the curve is flattening, right? Maybe we hang out at this level, consolidate for a bit. We're right in this gap, which is intriguing. The low, 41.05. So we've bumped up to that level, and we're kind of just hanging there. We get the oil numbers at 10.30. We'll see how those shake out. All right, jumping back to some of the stocks with news today. Nikola, an analyst at JP Morgan, upgraded the electric truck maker to overweight from neutral, noting the stock is starting to look attractive for the long-term investors in view of a number of potential positive catalysts in the coming weeks and months. Nikola, of course, the other name of Tesla, Nikola Tesla, uh, the other maker of electric cars, quite the, the storied run here to 43.99. All the way back down to 4023. Talk about a little bit of uh, coming back to reality. But today you're going to open almost 10% higher um, from 4008 to 4441. You see the pop there overnight on that change from JP Morgan. Apple, Deutsche Bank hiked its price target on Apple to 400 a share from 380, implying 7.3% from where it closed yesterday. Overall, we feel comfortable that Apple should continue to offer upside for investors. A Deutsche Bank analyst said in a note. However, the analyst noted the stock's recent sharp run-up has us nervous. Yeah, uh, it's 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 tough to see how far the stock. We we were just at 378 yesterday, right? Their their price tag was 380, and they bumped it up to 400. Um, we just traded from 220, I think, 212, the low. Uh, talk about a rocket ship, one way. I mean, there was not much pain in this trade from March 23rd. What are these retracements here from 288? to 265 that's a 23 dollars retracement but you just ran from 212 to 290 right again we get the pullback of about 20 dollars from 320 to 300 we get the pullback from 354 
to 332, and we're sitting at about 372. Let's jump around to some of those FANG stocks real quick. Amazon holding up well above 3,000. Bid ask of about 3,020 by 3,022 this morning. Microsoft shares closed yesterday at 208.25 after making it all the way up to 214. We're going to open at about 209 on uh, Microsoft's Netflix. 504 high yesterday. You're going to open at 497 this morning. Google shares was up above 1500 briefly yesterday. We're going to open anywhere between about 1490 and 1495. Facebook shares all time highs yesterday. I mean, think about this all time highs. Talk about the cost of doing business, right? What happened to the, the, the Facebook boycott uh, of advertisers? The cost of doing business. Um, Zuckerberg, I mean, this, this year alone during the pandemic, you look at it. Stock opened at 203 to start this year. Uh, it's up almost 20% at 240 right now from 137 down on those lows. All right. What else we have going on? Biogen, they're, they're trading positive after the company submitted an application to the FDA uh, for a treatment to Alzheimer's. Can't pronounce that one. If approved, that drug would be the first treatment with the potential to meaningfully change the course of the Alzheimer's disease. That's their, the company. I mean, pretty optimistic. I got to hope that'd be true. That's the company putting that out. BIIB, the stock reacting though. Biogen, let's get this on some smaller context. And there's your pop to 300 on the dot, back to about 288.98 on some promise, hopefully for a treatment to the Alzheimer's disease. Altria, shares of the tobacco giant downgraded Equal weight to overweight at Barclays. Uh, Altria is 100% U.S. exposed and continues to lose market share. Yeah, originally it was thought like, you know, cigarettes, they aren't going to pay the price here during COVID. Everyone's going to keep smoking. Um, you see that low down to 30 from 52. I did pay quite a price, actually. Um, and we're going to open 39.94 for Altria. Caterpillar, they got upgraded to neutral from underperform. 135, a price target. Let's see how Caterpillar's trading this morning. Maker of big equipments from 150 to 87. We're going to open a little bit positive, probably on that upgrade to 128.03. Yeah. All right, let's get into some of the COVID data in terms of how that's hitting. So this was a story you're talking about um, last night. 56 Florida hospitals. Get that headline for me. Uh, ICUs have hit capacity. Florida We've all heard the numbers spiking here pretty dramatic. Yesterday, for the first time, you had 60,000 cases um, in the U.S. overall. Florida been hitting between, I think yesterday's number was 7,000 something. Seven day average puts in seven, eight, nine, 10,000 cases a day. And the worry here, of course, is ICU spiking, hospitalization spiking, whether it's in Houston, Florida, California with some big numbers uh, as well. And, you know, you, you, this, this is, this is going to play out, folks, if this continues. So hopefully, please wear a mask. You have the death tolls being up, updated in terms of the expectations to now over 200,000 deaths. Uh, some estimations saying if 95% of people wore a mask, you might be able, and this is talking about in America, that you might be able to save 45,000 lives. Not to mention the economic stimulus that will be allowed uh, for not having to shut down as much if you ever see an overload like this. Because in Florida, you know, you're talking about that uh, schools are going to open, right? That's the conversation going on right now. Folks, I can tell you being in Florida, being around people with kids, if you have 10, 12,000 cases a day and this thing is just raging, sending your kid to a school uh, for many people is not a very comforting act. And you're going to see that play out if you see hospitals spiking, ICUs spiking, hospitals filling up 10, 15,000 cases a day, 100,000 cases a day potentially in the country. You can open up the businesses, you can open up the schools, but this is going to have an effect. And when the S&Ps are sitting right now at 31, 39, um, and those numbers are spiking and we're seeing ICUs filling up, I don't see how this isn't going to put a little fear in the market. And when you pay attention to the VIX, folks, that's what the VIX is saying. I mean, Kevin Hinks yesterday, right? He was talking about, listen, it happens because um, there's a skew. You know, if you, uh, if you have S&P puts, right, and maybe they're out of the money, um, you, you're not going to sell them because there's a skew here that there's a, there's a risk to the market being priced in with a VIX approaching 30 at a time when you have the NASDAQ making all-time highs almost on a daily basis. I mean, let's put this back on a daily. Doesn't get much better than this uptrend, folks. Green bar, green bar. I mean, what did we just do, right? Since we went over that, 
We're talking about trading one, two, three, four, five straight, six straight days, making new highs almost. I mean, you had to get above this level, but almost six positive bars yesterday turned around and the S&P trading at 31.39. So keep that in mind as these things play out. Uh, hopefully we get a vaccine and a treatment, but right now you're seeing hospitals filling up. There's already, you know, hospitals, we're making the choices now in Florida, because we're living it, that no more optional surgeries, right? No more of that because we got to make room for the ICU beds that are filling up. And you're going to see things shut down. Even if they don't shut down, you're not going to see people out there. And where are all these earnings that are going to come um, that the market's trading at 3,200 in the S&P? You're at least going to see some volatility in these stocks as potential huge states like Florida, Texas, California are potentially forced to shut down yet again. Restaurants, indoor dining, all of that. All right. Stay tuned. We'll come back, see what other stocks we have looking uh, for action. Check in on gold. Check in on oil again with numbers coming out at 1030. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back in three minutes. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by Bam! as well as whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We got S&Ps positive by about three points, checking in on the volatility in the markets. You can't overstate what's happening in this market with the volatility, folks. Yesterday, we're talking about the Dow down 1.5%. You've been up 1.8% the previous day. You don't have to go back far to find a few days of 2 to 3% almost in terms of the movement you get. You see the volatility of the market getting a little bit worried at these highs, I would say, um, for sure. So I was talking about 
you know, going back to school, it's an article I want to touch on as well, just in terms of 66% of parents are anxious about sending their kids to the classroom again this fall due to the COVID-19 pandemic, according to an annual back to school survey, huge money. And again, you tie it to whether it's, you know, life and reality, or you can tie it to the economic impact. They're both very related. Total back to school spending in the U.S. expected to amount to $28 billion or 529 dollars per a household. Um, Florida, Florida has Florida virtual for those parents out there. You know, that's a, a, a possibility that it's it's something that you're able to do. And this might be an opportunity no matter what happens. Schools might be open, but that doesn't mean parents are going to be super comfortable. And then the and then the next step goes right. The tough part is that who stays home with their kids, though? And, and, and if the parents work, that's a very difficult situation and something that is going to come quicker than we think, folks. It's July 8th. F schools in Florida start normally in like six weeks from now. And that's not going to happen with the way things are going in any normal semblance to what we're used to. And how is that going to play out here? You know, you got Brooks Brothers going BK, as we talked about, people not buying suits anymore, um, especially right now when they're working from home so often, a much more relaxed atmosphere. I even see people uh, on national television shows just being completely more casual in their home setting. And somehow it's seeming normal. And so uh, maybe that's the type of thing you're going to see, at least for the short time on schools as well, potentially. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got our man, Larry Pezzavento, coming up for the market open. We'll trade what you see from 9 till 10. Should be an interesting Wednesday with the markets. Right now, you get the S&P, NQs, and Dow futures in the positive. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back.